Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Aditya Singh and today we are going to perform perspective transformation with Python using OpenCV on a dashboard view of a vehicle. This project will provide deep insights into the working of modern day autonomous vehicles. So let's begin. So our goal is pretty straightforward. We are expecting a video from a video cam feed on a vehicle dashboard and we wish to perform a perspective transformation such that we are able to see the video from the perspective of a bird as if flying on top of the road. Now we are going to do not do any raw coding so our goal is going to be pretty straightforward. Well perspective transformation comprises of two aspects first of all and first of it is coding aspect and the second aspect is digital image processing aspect. So for digital image processing aspect, it's basically the mathematical aspect on how the transformation is actually being performed, how the extra pixels are being taken care of, how are they being calculated. However, the coding aspect is pretty straightforward, where all we are going to do is just leverage the existing OpenCV library, which is a very powerful library in the world of image processing. And just make the calls to the existing methods simply leverage the functionalities and perform the image processing i'm sorry perform the perspective transformation so let's begin with the coding aspect and that will be essentially the focus of this video however i'll talk about the digital image processing aspect as and when we come over those critical areas so first of all let's have a look at the video file that we will be working on and this will be available in the GitHub link that's below in the description. Now, first things first, we will be using OpenCV and NumPy. So let's install the libraries on our computer. And in order to do that, I'll do pip install OpenCV Python and then followed by pip install NumPy. Now, before performing image processing on our video, which is essentially perspective transformation, first of all, we'll need to be able to read the video file using our library. So let's do that. So this is the first phase of the code, which I have skipped the typing part, but let's see if it's working fine. And then we can circle back and understand line by line what we are doing. So perfect, our video is working fine. Now let's just break for a while, hold it and understand what we did. We imported CV2 library and then in with cap, we are using video capture from CV2 to capture the video file. And in the as a string in the argument, we can pass either the absolute path of the video file or the relative path. For our case, we are passing the relative path as the video file is in the same directory as the code. Then we are storing two values, success and image. Image is the frame. So when we do vidcap.read, we get either it's a success or failure. Was, was the CV2 able to read the video file? And then it returns a frame of the video file, not the entire video. And then if it's success, we are entering into a loop. And while success is true, while we are able to read some value from vidcap.read, uh, we want to uh, loop back and read again the next frame and that is what we are doing in the first line of the loop and then frame is equal to cv2.resize where we are basically resizing the frame into 640 comma 480 because we do not want the original frame that's huge we want it to resized so that it's uh, comfortable to our eyes on the screen and then we are doing cv2.im show frame frame and frame is the resized image that we got and then if cv2 dot wait key one so that's uh, one is for uh, it will hold for um, one millisecond and if you put it zero there it will be holding it for infinite time so it will hold it for one millisecond and then it will uh, re uh, move it to the next line that is it will uh, loop again uh, if the loop is incomplete however if in that one millisecond if you press uh, 27 is the ASCII equivalent of escape character. 
it will break and exit the loop. So two ways to break out of the loop, either success becomes false, that is video is completed or you hit escape in between. So I hope that's pretty, pretty clear. And we are ready to move to the next phase of the code that's performing image processing on this video file and doing the image transformation or the perspective transformation. Now this is the second phase of the code where again I've skipped the typing part but what we have done is we are selecting the coordinates of top left, bottom left, top right and bottom right and then we are drawing a circle on that, those coordinates to visually understand we have marked it, marked them correctly. So frame is on which we are, uh, so circle cv2.circle takes four arguments and um, sorry, five arguments. First one is the frame on which it wants to, we want to draw it the circle. Then TL second argument is the coordinate at which it wants to place the center of the circle. Then it asks for what radius of circle you are looking for. And then the color channel or that's BGR. So we are basically giving all the values to red. So circles are going to be red. And then thickness of the circle uh, circumference minus one stands for fill it completely. So we'll have a circle red color dot of five radius and five pixel radius and it will be filled completely. And that's there. So if I run the program, we have this. And right now they are pointing towards sky. Um, which we do not want, we want them to be on the road. So basically I had just randomly set them up as a rectangle, but now I'll pause the video and fix them to a trapezoid, which is focused on the road. Let's have a look at our new coordinates and they are perfect. So we have the trapezoid focused on lanes of the road and now we can perform the perspective transformation. So let's go ahead. So right now I have imported NumPy as NP on my code as well. And I have created two arrays of NumPy.float32, which where first array consists of four values of the original four coordinates of the image. And points two is the second array that's also in NumPy.float32 and that contains the final four coordinates. Uh, of the output transformed image. So we want the trapezoid to be mapped to these four coordinates that is top left will be 0 comma 0 and uh, bottom left will be x 0 y max that's 480 y and so on. Make sure that we are mapping it correctly right? as in if in the array one I am writing top left comma bottom left comma bottom right comma bottom uh, top right the order should be same for the points to array as well. I think this is the right point where I introduce you to a deeper concept that image transformation consists of two kinds of transformation. One is geometrical transformation and then second is intensity transformation. The perspective transformation is a kind of geometrical transformation where we are geometrically transforming the image coordinates whereas the intensity transformation consists of image thresholding or converting a RGB channel image to gray image or HSV image uh, and so on. So with that, uh, let's move towards our image transformation, which is specifically geometrical transformation. So with that, uh, let's move on to the next very crucial step where we are going to create the transformation metric for which is the essential step for perspective transformation. So get perspective transform from CV2 returns us the transformation metric. The function expects points one and points to be the two arguments in that order. And it expects it to be in NumPy only and not directly an array of points. And I know that this video is all about coding aspect, but I'll take a few minutes to talk about what's exactly happening. What's the significance of this matrix as this is the very core of the perspective transformation we are performing. So with this matrix, we essentially perform matrix multiplication on the original matrix or original image to obtain the transformed image or the transformed image metric. And I'm saying the word matrix a lot. But what is it? What's the significance of it in image processing? Let's take a moment to understand. 
So let's take a moment to understand how does computer sees an image. For us, we see us through our eyes and it feels very normal. But for computer, it's just a mathematical matrix where X and Y coordinates are the pixel coordinates. So if the image is HD resolution, that's 1024 cross 720 resolution, it has 1024 pixel values along X axis and 720 pixel values along Y axis and each pixel has an intensity value. And if it's a colored image and not gray, uh, black and white image, it will have the intensity value in color channel of RGB, that's red, green and blue. And each intensity value will be between 0 to 255 and the shades will decide the pixel color that lights up on that coordinate. So now we understand what the metrics are, how the computer sees the image as. Now we have created the transformation matrix, which will essentially when multiplied with this original uh, matrix, it will move the intensity value of our original coordinates to our desired position, such is that matrix. So how was that matrix calculated? There's a mathematical way for it, but that's now going too deep into it and we'll skip that. Also, let's take a moment to uh, uh, put light on a very challenging problem that underlies. And that's how are we gaining the value of intensity for extra pixels. Extra pixels as in on the original image, X and Y are the length of top and bottom horizontal lines. And X is clearly smaller than Y, but in the original image, they are both equal as in X grew to become Y. How did it grow? How does, uh, so we did know that from matrix multiplication, we got the intensity value on the top left and top right, but there are holes as in the original image has less number of pixels on the line of X as compared to the number of pixels there are on X dash. And these extra pixel values are generating via two methods. There are two methods for, and that's image processing. So now we know actually what it means for uh, when we say image processing for image transformation. Uh, we have to two ways that either use machine learning. So where we predict the pixel values for those pixel coordinates that we didn't have in the had in the original image via previous learnings on trainings or we use non machine learning approach. That is what we are doing here and we use libraries like OpenCV that mathematically performs. There are many methods, bilinear interpolation, and then it can grow in a uh, polynomial degrees or even other methods to uh, perform averaging and all sorts of mathematical operations to uh, generate the pixel intensities, which are very accurate. And that is what OpenCV does. And a very detailed discussion on what are these uh, mathematical operations. Uh, I have a an old video on this which has a good reputation. The link is in the description. Feel free to check it out and hi I highly recommend it for a deeper understanding and more confidence on the domain. Now let's finish this. Next call that we are supposed to make is uh, going to return us the transformed image and that's warp perspective from CV2 which will basically and essentially perform the matrix multiplication and generate those extra pixel value intensity values and return us in the form of an image. And that will be stored in transformed frame variable. This function takes in as arguments as frame, original frame, then the matrix with which we are supposed to multiply and then the resolution of the output metric that we expect it to transform into. Now let's make sure that we are able to visually or visualize the output of transformed frame. And in order to do that, we need to add the I am show from CV2 and I am show takes care of throwing out a windows frame, which uh, displays the frame that CV2 currently has. So let's do that and run this program. And uh, we have a spelling mistake. So let's fix that. And that is about it guys. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. And if you did, do drop a thumbs up on this video and that will let me know that you liked it and enjoyed it. And if there are some concepts that you found it 
are, are finding it challenging to understand do let me know in the discussions in the comment section and i'll be happy to reach back to you and help you out there and that is it bye bye